Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. We are talking with the 2003 World Series main event champion, Mr. Chris Moneymaker, as he is here to talk about his new big venture. He's going to be opening up the Moneymakers Social Club in Kentucky, just the second poker room to be opened up in that state. And we're here to talk with him about it. Chris, talk a little bit about the process of this, because this isn't something that uh, just let's just do that. I mean, it's obviously, I'm sure a lot of paperwork, a, a lot of licenses, all of these things, and then building out the room and making the decision where to do it, et cetera. How does this come about? Uh, so basically pre-COVID, I wanted to do one in Texas. I, I wanted I was going to be one of the first ones in Dallas, actually. I heard yeah. Dallas was about to go legal and, um, you know, right before um, uh, COVID happened, we were researching venues and trying to, you know, find a place. And uh, just with COVID and everything, it didn't come to be. So put it on the back burner. And now what? It's been almost three years later. And, uh, you know, Dallas is obviously saturated. I mean, there's what, 11 different rooms or something in Dallas already. Um, I really didn't want to go fight in that market. And right. so I've been looking for different opportunities, um, talking with lawyers, talking with just basically anybody, you know, where you where can you put rooms in the U.S.? And right. I found a couple spots, <clears throat> uh, the closest one being Kentucky. Um, I spent um, some stupid money with lawyers to get um, legal opinions and um believe that we're on the right side of the law i mean of course you know there's another room there it's been operating for a year but we're all still kind of gambling you're gambling in kentucky or in in texas as well but not near right. as big in kentucky trying to prove the model in kentucky works um and if it does then hopefully we will expand from there but um you know i got pretty good legal opinion that we're gonna be fine and hopefully we are, and we'll just have to sort of wait and see. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, all these guys up in the country clubs up in Kentucky, they're, they're playing gin, baccarat, poker, um, all in the country clubs, all for, you know, money that, you know, it's, I've, I've been up there, I've played in some of the games. Um, and, you know, really at the end of the day, you shouldn't have um, to where just the rich guys get to, to gamble and, and play. So, uh, kind of doing like a blue collar country club, you know, where everybody can come in and experience playing poker, playing gin, playing baccarat, playing pool, darts. We're, we're having a lot of different games. Um, we're going to have more games than what you would find in Texas. We're going to be more of a true social club. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hope we're applying for an ABC license. Hopefully we get that. So we'll have a bar. Uh, we're going to have all the football games, everything for, so hopefully Saturday and Sundays, People can come in. We're going to have uh, different membership levels for whether you're playing uh, the games or you're just coming in for the social uh, to watch football and things like that. Uh, Cause you know, Paducah doesn't have a ton of nightlife and a ton of bars. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, we're giving people uh, a different option to come in and, you know, whether it be shoot pool, throw darts, uh, play cornhole, uh, we're going to have golden tea, foosball. Um, and then obviously, you know, poker um and we'll have a, a, a bar so um we're just doing something a little bit different it's not it's similar to the texas model in the fact that like texas when you go in there when you sit down at the table they charge you a seat fee so you're renting the fee from the 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 room to sit down uh our model is a little bit different in the fact that we don't charge a seat fee mm -hmm. we charge a door fee when you go into our club you, whether you're on the games membership or the social membership you're going to pay a fee. Um, if you're not playing and you're pay you're on the games membership, once you go in their door, you know you're you're paying the fee. It doesn't matter. You go sit at the bar, you're paying the games fee. Um, now you sit out in our lobby, which we're going to have a lobby with couches and TVs and out there, anyways. Um, you're not paying anything, but once you go through our door, that's when you're paying the fee. When as the games that you play, whether it be um, baccarat, chess pool darts golden tea whatever um they're all going to be flat rate you can play whenever you want um we don't charge anything for those games so 
It's just basically once you enter the room is what you're paying the fee for. And then obviously we'll have a membership fee in the beginning, which is going to be, you know, reasonable one, either a one-time fee, we have a weekly fee, monthly fee, or a yearly fee. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you get charged to play per hour. How does that work? Uh, you don't, well, you get, every time you're in the room, you're playing, you're mm -hmm. paying an hourly fee. So mm -hmm. um, if you're in the room uh, for 10 hours, you pay 10 hours worth of fee. Um, and again, you could be on the a social end of it. So if you want to come in and watch football all day, you're going to pay a lower fee. If you come in during the morning, you're going to pay a lower fee. Um, our, you know, fee structures are going to, we haven't officially 100% finalized them. We're real close, obviously, since we're opening in 10 days, but, um, you know, our obviously nighttime hours, uh, in games are going to be a little bit higher price than, you know, just coming in and having a drink at the bar and, and watching football or coming in for the morning shift and, and playing, you know, whatever game you want to play during, during the afternoon and mornings. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> and so the, the target, and so again, could you say which town it's in, in Kentucky? Yep. It's in Paducah, Kentucky, which is in the, uh, very Northwest corner of Kentucky. We're about two hours away from Nashville two or two and a half hours away from Nashville, two and a half hours away from St. Louis, uh, a lot of small towns, Cape Girard, um, and metropolis right in that area it takes me about three hours to get there from memphis um so we're not really close to a big town but we're not far either we're you know a couple hours drive from just about everywhere so uh hopefully we'll pull from a lot of markets um i think we're gonna do a lot of fun promotions we're gonna have tournaments we're gonna have you know appearances from people uh poker pros so um obviously i'm gonna be up there quite a bit so we're going to have a lot of different opportunities for people to, to do things that are unique. We're not going to have a live stream to start out with. Um, being that it's a smaller, a little bit smaller market, we're going to uh, do that hopefully as we expand. But um, first goal, first things first, we need to get this one open and prove the concept works and people are happy with it. And, you know, people in Kentucky like to play poker. They don't have the ability to do it. Metropolis had a room um, pre-COVID. And then COVID happened and uh, they shut down and never came back. So mm -hmm. we're kind of filling that void that Metropolis left. Um, they had an active room there. Uh, don't know why they didn't bring it back. I guess slot machines are better. Um, whatever the reason is, they left a void there and we're trying to fill it. And this is in that town. They, they had a poker room. Previously. We are seven miles away from Metropolis. So yeah, we're right across the river. Metropolis is in Illinois. And mm -hmm. uh, we're right across the, the town, the river. So obviously this is relatively new in Kentucky. It, it's actually a state that you don't really hear about poker rooms or whatever. Is it, was there a certain law that kind of opened up to do it? Or was it the room that decided to do it? Which, by the way, that room is about five hours away on the other side of the state. So it's not there's no real competition directly. Yeah, no, we, we had zero competition with the other room. That room's been open for a year. Yeah. And... Kentucky is a unique state in the fact that a lot of it is, while they do have state laws and everything, a lot of it is county based. So if you get in with a county, they aren't going to, you know, it really depends on who, who the, the guy at the county level is. Um, so we got a good letter from the, the county of um, McCracken County. And uh, so we feel pretty confident in that county. Now, you know, as far as like other cities in the state or other counties i don't know how it will work i don't know you know if you try to go to one of these bigger cities yeah you might get shut down i know that since i've announced i was opening i know there's probably three or four rooms i know i know of two for sure that are planning on opening um but i don't believe they're going to be doing their due diligence like i did and going to get attorneys and getting uh, opinions and I'm, I'm assuming, guessing that probably they're going to be more likely to be shut down. I know the one across the state went and, and got legal opinions. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an expensive step, but if you're going to be doing this business, I think it's something when you need. Um, if you don't have good representation and good, good security going in, um, they can just come in and shut you down. So um, I don't know where we would go next if, if we prove the model, but uh, obviously if we prove the model and we, we do good things, then um, we'll have opportunities in, in different areas to, to go look at. What games are going to be playing and, and how big is the room? How many tables, et cetera? So right now, well, I, I started out with eight tables. Um, 
that was that was the plan. We have eight cash game tables. Um, since I was starting to talk about it, I've been reached out to by just an amazing amount of people asking for tournaments and everything else. And I was, you know, thinking it's going to be a small little room. We we're going to have, you know, pool and all these other things. Well, I went out and bought 12 tournament tables to go on top of the eight. So we're going to have 20 tables. Um, we're going to have tournaments. I've got a tournament director coming in. Um, you know, we're going to have, you know, whatever basically the players want to play. So we're going to have PLO. We're going to have Hold'em. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd like to have like a limit game, you know, Omaha high-low game. Um, but it's really going to be what the predominant population plays. And I will say the majority of the population up there plays PLO. That's going to be probably the most pre predominant game. Uh, there mm -hmm. will be probably a, a bigger PLO game. And then we will have mm -hmm. um, obviously some smaller PLO games. But that that from most of what Metropolis had and mm -hmm. underground games up there, what they've been playing, it's mostly PLO. So I would mm -hmm. imagine that's going to be a – you know, like if you go to Cincinnati, for example, Cincinnati has one of the biggest PLO rooms um, in the country. Like, you know, uh, the casino up there plays, spreads a lot of PLO. Uh, I don't know if it's just a Kentucky thing. Like uh, Bowling Green has a big underground uh, PLO scene and uh, play with a lot of people from the Cape up in uh, Missouri that they play PLO. So we, we have people around that, that like to play PLO. So I imagine that's going to be our, our most popular game. But, you know, again, we're going to spread whatever – our customers want us to spread. We're going to try and keep everybody um, happy and in action. We probably will, you know, do the best we can to accommodate everybody without, you know, running anybody off, I guess, the, you know, at the end of the day, whatever. Um, you know, we're trying to do different tournaments. We're going to have buy-ins that are go up to, you know, maybe $1,000, $2,000. We're also mm -hmm. going to have free rolls. You know, I plan on having like a 10K free roll, uh, where people come in and, you know, don't have to spend money to, to, you know, you have to pay for the membership and that's it. Um, and get a chance to, you know, get a shot at some money. So we're going to run a lot of different promotions and, you know, obviously those promotions will dic will be dictated by how many people we have in the room and how, we're, how good the room's doing. But, um, you know, we, we do have, uh, a budget set aside for, you know, trying to reward our customers and taking care of them. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it sounds like an exciting venture, obviously, but it, it must be different, right? Obviously, you've been your representative for Poker Stars for so many years. You're now full with America's card room. But now you're the head of the card room or you're the owner. It must be it, there. There's got to be other headaches that come with this, right? It's not just you are patched up in play. Now the, all the little things. Well, I mean, yeah, there's obviously things you don't think about, like, you know, I've, I've run i've never run games i've had friends run games i've been in uh, underground games like running a poker game is not hard that that's the right. easy part right. i mean anybody right. can run a poker game the the things that you don't really think about are you know make your, your sales and use tax your franchise tax your your payroll um you, know, you gotta pay your payroll taxes um you gotta have insurance you, you, all the the grown-up things that go along with owning a business <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, yeah. when you run a poker game, you just run a poker game and, you know, whatever, it's a legal underground game. Um, you don't have to do any of this stuff where, right. you know, what we're doing, you know, we've had, to, you know, obviously we're paying rent We're uh, we have insurance, we, you know, all the taxes that we have to take care of. Um, we got to go hire dealers officially and, you know, put them on, on payroll and, um, you know, just so many things that you don't really think about, um, when you're running a typical room that yeah, it's, it's become more of a thing. Like, you know, I gotta go get um, point of sale machines. I gotta go get ATMs. I gotta go get card money counters. I gotta make sure my chips are unique that they can't be counterfeited. Um, you know, just things that, you know, normally you don't think about, but you know, you, they all come into consideration. Yeah. I mean, like all the little things that, uh, you know, you don't think about that, that, that just must have to happen. Right. You know, silly. Well, no, well, Ryan, I'm not even into the ABC and, yet. Like the ABC, you right. know, if I get um, alcohol, then that's another whole right. dynamic I have to consider. Um, if we don't get ABC, then we're going to be a BYOB and that's a whole different ball of wax of, you know, trying to, to manage that. So again, it's, it's a learning process on the fly, but thank goodness I have really smart people that are, are better at this than me. Yeah. They've had operations experience or they've had a uh, tournament poker room or poker room experience. I'm um, bringing in people that have dealt in casinos, have, have run poker rooms and casinos and 
Um, so yeah, we're going to have a good team around us that, um, even though I'm not going to be there all the time, I know that it'll be well looked after and people know, know how to treat the players and know how to, you know, run a good room. How often do you, do you plan on trying to be there? Uh, I mean, that would be a question for my wife more than anything <laughs> else. Um, no, I'm, I'm obviously going to try and get up there as much as I can. Um, it's a three hour drive. I, I anticipate that there'll be a lot of days that I get up in the morning, drive three hours to go play or make a, make a stop, make a visit and then drive home that night. Like right. it's just a long commute. Um, <clears throat> that's probably, you know, or I'll go up for the weekend. I'll, I'll go up on, you know, a Friday afternoon and come back to Sunday morning. Um, right. It kind of depends on my kid's schedule more than anything else. But, you know, I say my wife jokingly, she really doesn't, she'll let me do whatever I want. It really comes down to my kids. Um, you know, I've got three of them and they're in soccer and soccer and, uh, you know, what we have soccer? tennis, golf, <laughs> we, we're just, it's busy. The school started back up. So we, we, if you look at our calendar right now, it's, absolutely nuts and uh we're all we just run a taxi service and anybody that has kids knows they use them when course, you're in a, when you're a parent you're more or less you know yeah shuttling kids from point a to point b so exactly. whenever my wife needs help um that, you know, one of my daughters you know is really helpful she's uh, able to drive now so that takes a lot of burden off off her and me she's able yep. to help out quite a bit but um still you know i want to be there for you know the games and uh the different events so um it really depends on their schedules as how often i can get up there but i will say that you know i'm not going to be traveling much outside of my room um mm -hmm. because if i have an opportunity to travel i'll want to go to paducah and and support right. the room well it's, it's funny when you have a child who drives so both of my kids now drive the first time it happens you're just so nervous you're like, oh God, please, please, I hope he's safe and et cetera, et cetera. Then about a month in, you're like, can can you go get milk? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you? Do, and you're like, so thankful that they do it. And uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. I remember the the first day she got her license. We're like, all right, we're gonna right. just like kind of like ease her into this. Right. And right, like, right. if I remember correctly, my wife's like, hey, can you go get this, 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 and this? And I'm like, <laughs> hey, can you go over here? Right, like, right. We, we had her driving everywhere the first day. Right. And you know. She loves driving. She loves helping out. Of course, she's, of course. she's my uh, she's my child that just really enjoys um, being around the house and helping. And so it's yeah. it's been really great. She's, right. She's been a godsend. She's helped us so much. And yeah, you're right. It was very nerve wracking in the beginning. Now it's like, hey, we have a we have a target quick list. Can you go grab it real fast? Yeah. No. And, and that's that's the thing that, uh, you know, you you don't realize how helpful it is and, and how convenient it is now suddenly. You know, you don't have to, oh, I need something at the store. I'm making, oh, can you go get it <laughs> instead of me doing that? So right. can you can you pick it up on your way from, instead of us going and waiting and go picking up, her up from school, now right. she drives herself to school. Right. Hey, can you pick some up, something up on the way home? You know, we need right, this. Right, and, right, right. Well, you know, obviously it changes from, you know, you, you having to go do everything to, yeah, you have, you have some time now and yep. that obviously frees you up to do things with the other kids. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really nice. And we, we got another one that's 14 now and she'll be driving soon. So, um, pretty soon, you know, I don't know, I'm getting old, I guess I'll get all these kids that are driving and you know, I'm not near as old as you, thank goodness. Um, yours are all, you know, <laughs> driving everywhere, but, uh, uh yeah, it's, I really enjoyed the the earlier stages in their lives, but I, I definitely enjoyed this phase too. That, you know, my kids have grown up to be pretty good kids. So pretty blessed on that front. And uh, I definitely like spending time with them and being around and seeing their, their activities. Um, so that's, you know, kind of why, you know, part of the reason I did this room is um, why I do represent ACR and I get to work from home. Like they don't really have me traveling a whole lot. Um, it's something that it's a little bit different. That's kind of close by. I can get to it and get home, um, you know, three hours while it's still a pretty decent commute. It's not that bad. I mean, right. you know, people drive an hour. If you, if you live in Atlanta, you're probably driving two hours anyways, trying to get in traffic, trying to get home. So, right. I mean, right. it's really not that much difference. Right, 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 right. So what do you kind of envision the hope or the future of the room, you know, is it like you said, it sounded like you're looking to expand to potentially other cities in Kentucky. Is that kind of what the hope is? 
well, maybe not in Kentucky, but like, you know, in the U S where, you know, we're, we're going to be looking for opportunities. Um, this again is my first model doing this. I, I want to see, you know, with my team that I've got running it, how they do. And am I able to run these rooms remotely? Um, you know, most of the people that run rooms, whether it be, you know, the lodge or whatever they live and they, they go to the room every day. So, right. um, trying to run a room remotely is a little bit different. Sure. And so, um, at the end of the day, I want to see how that process is. That's another reason I kind of chose Paducah. It, while it's, it, I think it's going to be a really good room. It's not the biggest market either. It's like, you know, we're not going into Lexington or Dallas or something where we're just going to get like 30 tables just slammed on us. Right. Um, so if we do make mistakes, mistakes hopefully will be smaller, not as magnified, and we can fix them faster and we can learn what we're doing wrong. And that will help us going forward in some of the bigger markets, I hope. Sure. That, that's the plan anyways. That's the strategic goal, I guess. Right, right, right. Uh, the other thing that we'll, you know, I, I really want to bring back is the moneymaker tour. That's something that, um, since I left Poker Stars, like that's one thing I really did enjoy is going around and playing some of those events. So, um, as part of this room, I'm also going to look to bring that back as well and trying to figure out how that's going to look and uh, what kind of poker tours we're going to have um, going along with that. Yep. That's yeah, a yeah. hopefully 2023 um, plan. Right, 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 right. And, why, and like you said, it's it's uh, a scenario where you can learn from any potential mistakes and then kind of grow uh, from there if, if need be, right? Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. I know I know we're going to make mistakes. Again, I just, you hope the mistakes are the small mistakes and or they're mistakes that you can learn from and we don't keep repeating them. So um, I think it's a really good test case and uh, we'll just sort of see what happens. Yep, yep, no, absolutely. And it's it's exciting, obviously, from from the standpoint of yourself of opening up this new room here in uh, Kentucky, and 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 hopefully the market will uh, embrace it and and see how that does. And it's interesting to, for for you to say that you're looking at expanding in other states. I thought you would be looking at more in Kentucky itself, but uh, definitely very interesting to see like what else you can do and and in some respects start the whole process all over again because state to state it'll be all you. I mean, at least you know what you're looking for but it'll be a different state if you're if you're if you're looking at doing that yeah i mean we definitely would be starting the whole process again um but the process you know my, whether it was poker stars back when we were you know gray market and or acr now that we're kind of gray market um i'm always looking to to find the next opportunity to provide or to help people play poker i mean right or you know give people services that they can't play because at the end of the day, poker is, is gambling, of course, but like anybody that plays poker knows that it is the most tame form of gambling that you can do. I mean, it takes a lot of mental power. It takes a lot of skill and generally people that want to, that have gambling problems are going to be more, you know, fast action, blackjack or sports or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, where poker is more of a game of skill, it's a little bit slower. It doesn't give you that that rush as often. So, um, people that have gambling problems generally don't go to poker too often, um, for that fact that it is more of a slow burn. That right. is, you know, again, it's a lot of making small decisions, and that's, you know, for years I've been trying to, you know, tell people like, you know, poker is a game of very small decisions over and over and over and over again that can get really boring you're gonna fold a lot a lot get, yeah right and it's going to be boring so if you have a issue where you need to get adrenaline or whatever it's probably not the best for you because right, right, uh right. you know it's it's not a game where you can just sit there and get constant adrenaline um, and it, it, you can, but you're not going to last very long in the game. Right. I mean, right. ironically, that's why you started the game, right? You, you've told me uh, many yeah, multiple I was in, times. I played on the blackjack show. and other things. And right. I started because yeah, I, I, I wasn't you going wanted to like kind of draw it out. Right. And, and take the time and, and, and sit and there and have a couple of beers instead of it being like two hands and you're done. Right. Exactly. I want to enjoy the experience in a casino and enjoy, you know, being there where instead of, you know, back when I was playing, sports and blackjack and 
probably just mostly blackjack back then but um you know i would go and i would eventually go broke every single time now granted <laughs> you know it was all i was only bringing three or five hundred dollars most of the time right, right, still right. i mean it's all relative it you know you still go broke um right you know I, you can take three hundred dollars and go play poker and generally you know obviously some days i'll go broke pretty fast but other days you can sit there the entire day and uh you know watch and maybe sports. sometimes come home with a profit which is very rare in the pit games as long as bernard lee's on the call with you <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, we we uh, congratulate you. Look forward to hearing about the success. Uh, if we're down in that area, we'll definitely stop by. Um, but it is going to be opening up at the beginning of September. Target date is September first, but obviously there, that could be uh, here. We're, we're there. trying that. That's that's obviously the goal. But you know, we we don't know for sure. But that that's what we're shooting for. Right, and it'll. Open up Moneymakers Social Club in Paducah, uh, Kentucky, starting out with eight tables and uh, have the ability to have 20 and uh, just about a two, two and a half hour drive from Memphis and also St. Louis. And hopefully you will stop by there and see the 2003 WSOP main event champion, our good friend, Chris Moneymaker. Chris, thanks so much for taking the time out. I know you were literally, just so people know, before our call, he was on the phone with the room, with the manager, taking care of every single detail you can imagine. So they are working hard. And we, uh, we actually delayed this interview probably 30 minutes. That's just... right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Small stuff. Excuse me. Yeah. And, and a couple of days here and there, cause you're working on stuff too. So like, you know, obviously you are working hard on it. We look forward to hearing about the uh, opening and uh, wish you all the best, my friend. Thanks buddy. Have a good one. Thank you. Chris Moneymaker here on the Bernard Lee poker show as he's about to open up his room. And as always, may you always go in with the best hands and may you never get unlucky. Good night, everybody. Have a good one.